I think, I think there's a difference if you look at teams which, uh, with players with African descent. You know, uh, I think we bring something different to the, to, the, to the English Premier League. You know, in terms of skill, um, uh, and, and in terms of, uh, again, you know, uh, what we're all about. You know, uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, he said to see that we don't have a lot of players or, 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 or players that go to the EPL for, for football reasons. Because for me, I think it's important that what you do at first as a footballer is to compete and be, and be a footballer and be at the best that you can be. Because you're not only there for, for, for yourself, you're there for, for the country. I mean, there's a lot that you do uh, as, a, as, as a footballer. But yes, now we see that, especially South Africa, we don't, we, we don't really um, export a lot, you know, especially in the top league, because that's what we need in order for us to progress, you know, or to make an impact in Africa first, you know, before, before the world. And um, until we do that, for me, I think we're going to see progress in the game, you know, because it doesn't only, for me, it's not only about the football, but it's how uh, the players, how, how, it, how the Premier League impacts on us as, as footballers, what we learn, you know, uh, you know in the game. And, and once you bring it back, you know, here, you know, it's, it, 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 it filters down, you know, and, and again, it inspires, you know, uh, the, those who, who, wants to, who wants to play football and take football. And the current crop as well. You know, I, I, I think they should be inspired to go and play and, 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 and take their talent somewhere else, abroad, where they can improve and be better than what they are now. Why do you think we're struggling um, to export players, <coughs> especially to the top five leagues um, in the world? I mean, currently we have no one in the Bundesliga, we have no one in La Liga, we have no one in Serie A. Um, yeah. I think we just have one player in the EPL. Yeah. I think one or two in French Riviera. Why are we struggling to send players to those two parties? I think, you know, we lack the caliber, you know, of the players that uh, can contribute in a way that, uh, you know, it, it becomes instrumental to our football. Uh, the structures of our game now don't allow that, I think, that's my opinion. It doesn't allow uh, uh, the players. I mean, yes, I know there's a lot of money that's involved in the game today, which, you know, it's, it, 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 it affects a lot of players psychologically in terms of why they want to play football. Do you know what I mean? Whether it's all about the money or it's about themselves, as professional football wanted to be, better people or better players and contribute even better when they come back to South Africa. You know, and uh, I think we have to look at, at that uh, as an organization, not me, but I think it's South, they have to look at the, the proper structures that can develop, uh, they can have players that can actually, you know, go abroad and represent that they can always and they can always be part of the national team going forward. Um, do you think that South African players have the mental fortitude, the mental toughness to succeed in a league as tough as in the Premier League? I mean, we've seen with a few uh, of the players that have went, that, that have went and then come back, and obviously we can see even now that uh, obviously it's, uh, we, we don't really or instill that into those players and encourage them to, to go overseas. I mean, with the money that they get, I mean, from big clubs like Sundowns, because those are the teams that we think, if you look at the national team, or if we need the quality of players in this country, we look at the big teams. 
you know, we look at Pirates, we look at Chiefs, you look at where you can get all those players. And, and, and it's not the same because those, te those players now, they end, they end big, you know, in these clubs. And obviously, yeah, I think for them, you know, having to end that match here, why would they go overseas? I think for me, that's one of the things that I think needs to be to be touched on going forward. We need we need a proper structure, you know, that will actually talk to every team, every player, you know, about um, the quality that we need to improve our football in this country. Yeah. Um, just um, your feelings on you know the coaching change, the coaching change with the maybe becoming the head coach of the coaching change. Is what you what you make of that? Do you think it's the right move? Uh, you know, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's my opinion because to be honest, they've got the reasons why uh, they moved. Uh, they had that, that that kind of move, but I think for me, as as big as the club is, has achieved, you need. You, you need someone who's going to be um, quality in terms of of coaches, you know, with a, with a great reputation. You know, because I think with him, Lefintek, he's been there, he's been with the national team. And I'm not saying that uh, he wouldn't make an impact. He will definitely make an impact. But for a club like Kedah Chiefs, you need a, a coach that will actually change the players individually and make them better. You know, because most of the time we, we, we always want to buy ready-made players and take players from sundowns and bring up here yeah, who's, who's quality, but can you take him to the next level? So I think that's what kind of coach that this club needs. I know uh, great that they, 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 they appointed him relief, but I don't doubt he, he, his skill, but I think we could have, uh, the Kedah Chiefs could have done better. You know, and having Mulif, he, because he's been there anyway, having me, ha have him in the fold. Are you, sorry, just, just, to, go, just to go back on the same point. Uh, oh, okay. just, okay, sorry. Okay, okay. I'm just sorry, guys. <coughs> Is that okay? Sure. Yeah, please. Um, <coughs> just to touch on that, do you, it's been out, they're going to go into the eighth season with a, without a, any soul boy. Do you think he is the man who can win them something? Because it doesn't sound like you have much confidence in his um, ability to actually win maybe silverware. Uh, you know, I think at, the, at this point, I mean, uh, looking at the club, I think it will take them a few steps to get to, to the point where you think this is the club that is worth winning. Uh, 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 silverware because they get to, they have to get to that level first, <coughs> and then then you can say yes. But I think maybe if we will take them to that level, but not 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 quite to the level where they're hoisting uh, uh, a trophy or some sort of silverware, you know, in the country. Because I mean, a club like Kansas Chiefs, they have to be competing in Africa. They have to be. Top three, top five teams in Africa, you know, and uh, that's what we expect from them. And if you expect that, you know, there's a lot of co when you look around the, those teams that have that are at the top, and you look at their coaching staff, it says a lot about that. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at uh, this coaching appointment, um, um, let me take you to replacing Atazwane. Um, who might <coughs> in terms of coaching credentials and also the experience, um, Nzeki is slightly or even way ahead of Zwane uh, in terms of experience. So, and, and also when you also look again, this is the seventh coaching appointment um, in the space of five seasons. And as you know, Kedah Chiefs, they are, they are a team that has been operating, operating differently in the past where a coach would go in. And finishes and finish, yeah. Yes. Does this then also tell you that um, how the club has been handling uh, these coaching appointments and the football projects 
You know, it's a pity that the coaches have been judged by the results, you know, and, uh, but uh, to be able to have a, a stable team that consistently does well, you know, I mean, we've seen with other teams that have done well, you know, uh, in the continent, the national teams, is they, they keep the same coach for a period of time. You know, there's a chance of him, you know, uh, forming a strong, very strong team with people that he will rely on and that you'll see week in, week out you know, playing, building his own team. And then you stand a chance of winning things. But if you're going to be changing coaches, you know, in a very short period of time, then, you, then something must be wrong. Because we always blame the coaches, but I, sometimes I think you've got to look somewhere else to, to get, you know, uh, uh, where uh, uh, the, the core of the program is. I just want to go back to a point you made inside. Last one, please. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just want to go back to a point you made inside. And uh, it's a point that we've been talking about um, over a period of time about the, the change of leadership. Um, recently, uh, we were talking to the Minister of Sport, and it was just after Clive Barker had passed on. And the Minister of Sport, was very clear that uh, he doesn't have confidence in how the current football leadership um, is steering the ship, especially towards bringing change um, in, in the country. Is, is, do you think this is the, this is the kind of voices that are needed um, to, to amplify this message? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the minister is very influential, you know, when, uh, obviously. I myself believe that, you know, in the matters of football in this country, they have to be involved. You know, I mean, they're the minister of sport anyway. And I know they're in the political side of things, you know. And when we say, you know, normally politics, you know, they tend to, exactly, you know. Uh, but, uh, yes, I think we need more voices like that. But I think even the people themselves know. Do you know, uh, I think, you know, if you've been running uh, or you've been in charge of something for a long time, it's not about uh, not of good use, but it's about the change itself. Everything changes, you know, football changes, players changes, everything change. You know, that's when you get results. That's when we have the idea of where we're heading to, you know, uh, proper structures in place, you know, and, and I think that's what it's needed at the moment uh, in terms of our football going forward. Uh, Ruth, just looking at the bigger picture for domestic football now, um, do you think, preferably looking at Pirates, Chiefs, maybe Super Sport, um, to a right extent, Crystal City, do you think these guys can really go after someone else and really give someone the proper job? I mean, it depends. What the, why? Why? What makes Santos to be who they are? You know. I mean, uh, I mean, obviously. I mean, they've got. I mean, you can see the quality of the players they have, and obviously the way they acquire those players. And uh, and and uh, yes, I, I do believe that there's enough talent around if you look properly, and and, and a proper uh, restructuring in terms of bringing up those players to be to be to make an impact or to challenge or to compete at that top three, top five level of a football in this country. Yes, for sure. You know, but it's all, I think, depending on the size of the club, you know, which I think it, that's what we see at the moment. And the, okay, um, last question for me. Um, going back to Chiefs, um, you spoke about them uh, not, oh well, you, you said they had to find someone who has the ability of improving the players and taking them to the next level. Can you say that Chiefs missed out on an opportunity to appoint Ito Musimane because they did have an opportunity to bring him on board? No, absolutely. I think he's one of our top coaches. Why not? You know, uh, I think, I mean, he's done absolutely brilliant, you know, uh, outside the country. We've seen his credentials are absolutely brilliant. 
And why don't you give him a chance, you know, to come back and, and see if he can bring that kind of change that we need in our football. And at the moment, he's a good example to most of our own coaches and he represents local coaches that they've done well, you know, in the game.